One of the most common causes of uh, false positives in genomics are batch effects or other confounders. And so I'm going to show you a little example of how you remove those um, in R. So I'm going to set up um, my plotting parameters like I'd like, and then I'm going to load the libraries that we need. In this case, it's the SVA package and the uh, SNP stats package that are the main drivers of most of the analysis that we're going to be doing here. So I load those packages, um, and then I'm going to load this bladder data set. Um, and so in this case, um, I have a, a expression set, um, a bladder expression set. I'm going to extract the phenotype information and the expression information from it. And so now I have um, a expression object that has 57 samples in it. Um, and I have some information on the phenotypes for that. And so in this case, I have information on the outcome. And I also have information on the batch variable um, and then whether it's a cancer sample or not. And so the first thing that you might want to do if you're going to adjust for, you want to deal with the batch effects is if it's labeled like this, if you actually have the batch variable, you might be able to adjust, uh, directly adjust for it. So the way that you could do that is you could build a model matrix um, for the cancer variable, and then you could actually just add in another one for the batch variable, say where you want the data um, to come from. It's from this phenotype data. So now I've got this model matrix, which I can then fit with ln.fit. We learned in the last lecture and so now I have these coefficients that have been adjusted for um, batch effects basically I've adjusted them directly um, with the ln fit function so I can now look at the coefficients for the variable that I care about across all of the different samples um, and so uh, that that works out pretty well the one thing that um, you have to be a little bit careful of is if there's a tight correlation between the phenot uh, batch variable and the uh, outcome variable that you care about so um, it, ideally you'll have balanced within each batch you'll have observations from uh, multiple different groups in this case it's a little bit tricky because for example say the fourth batch only has biopsy samples um, so fortunately, they're not perfectly confounded in the sense that in the fifth batch, you actually have some biopsy and some cancer samples. And similarly, um, you have some comparison between cancer and normal within the second batch. So you have some information to gain there. But if these are perfectly correlated, in other words, if all the cancer samples are run in batch one and all the normal samples are run in batch two, um, you can't use this any of the adjustment methods I'm going to be talking about here. So you have to be very careful about that at the experimental design stage. Another way that you can adjust for batch effects if you want to, if you actually know them, if you have them in advance, is to use combat, which basically is the similar approach to um, direct linear adjustment, but it basically does a sum of the shrinkage that we talked about. And so that can have some advantages when you have especially small sample sizes. And so here I have to build a model matrix for the com combat function. And so the model matrix in this case, um, I'm going to tell it has nothing but an intercept term. Um, and then I have the model that I'm actually going to test, which is the model that has the cancer term in it. So then what I can do is when I'm running combat, I can basically run combat to get a cleaned expression data set. So I do combat, um, and then I tell it what data to look for. Um, in this case, it's the expression data, and I tell it what the batch variable is, and then I tell it, is there anything else that it should be adjusting for? Um, and then it... Um, basically fits a set of models um, and you can have it either plot some output or not and so um, what will end up happening though is it's going to fit this model and it's going to basically regress out the batch effects and so then you can go through and you can do LM fit on the cleaned data so you basically get the combat fit um, on this data and then you can fit the LM fit model with our cancer model matrix now um, with the data set that was cleaned with combat. So now I have a combat fit uh, per coefficients, which I can look at as well. So I can look at the coefficients from this. So I can see here that they seem to be a little bit smaller than the coefficients that I got when I fit the direct linear adjustment. And in fact, that uh, tends to be the case. So here I'm going to make a plot. Um, it has a few parameters, so I'm not going to type the whole thing here, but I'm going to plot the coefficients from the original linear model fit versus the combat um, model fit. And so if I do that, I can actually um, add the 45 degree line. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it a one by one plot, and then I'm going to make that plot and add the 45 degree line. 
And so you can see, for example, that the combat values tend to be a little bit smaller. So the y-axis is a little bit smaller than the x-axis here because we've done that shrink shrinkage. So the other thing that can happen is imagine that you either don't know that batch variable or imagine that batch variable doesn't count, uh, encompass all the different potential technical artifacts. Then you might want to infer the batch variables and you can do that with the SVA package, uh, SVA function. And so uh, here I'm going to build that model matrix with the cancer uh, outcome that I care about and then I'm going to build the model I'm going to compare that to. So in this case I'm going to compare it to a model with um, no covariates in it. So that's the null model. Um, and then what I can do is I can actually create some covariates by running the SVA function on this data set. So I pass it the expression data set, the uh, model for the including the variable I care about, the model not including the variable I care about, and then I tell it how many surrogate variables or how many surrogate batch effects it should estimate. And so then it's going to go through and estimate those batch effects through an iterative procedure. And so now what I can do is I can actually um, see that the um, SVA object that's returned has um, this SV um, component, which is uh, basically new covariates that have been created that are um, the potential batch effects. And so, for example, I can plot uh, the, or I can uh, uh, correlate those batch effects with the actual observed batch variable. And I can see that our estimated surrogate variable is, the second one is super highly correlated with the batch variable. The second one, the first one isn't necessarily as correlated with the batch variable as the first one. So then I can make a plot of that second surrogate variable versus the batch variable. And I can see that there's like a relationship between the inferred surrogate variable, the inferred batch effect, and the um, observed batch effect. And so then I can actually plot these um, data points on top of that to see that that's true. So what we've done here with the SVA is not necessarily actually cleaning the data set. We've just identified new covariates that we now need to include in our model fit. So we can combine them with our original model that had the cancer term in it. And so we end up with a uh, model fit that includes both our es estimated surrogate variables as well as our cancer status variables. Okay. And so then I can use uh, lm.fit or any of the other methods we talked about in the previous lecture to get the model fit um, after you adjust for those um, variables. So now what I can do is I can uh, see what the uh, model fits look like comparing SVA to combat, for example. So here I'm plotting um, SVA versus combat. Um, so on the x-axis is going to be the SVA adjusted values and on the y-axis is the combat adjusted values. So you can see that they're actually pretty highly correlated with each other. Um, and then you can do the same thing for the SVA versus the uh, just linear model adjusted without the combat adjustment. And you can see here that these aren't necessarily shrunken and so they are maybe even a little bit more correlated without the shrinking. So that's basically how you can run SVA on uh, the data set to infer the batch effects if you don't know what they are.